So we will be doing this mini MBA series on these topics also. Uh, you will be keep informed about uh, these mini MBA series wherein these knowledge series of business analytics and uh, knowledge series on finance, which will be a two to five days program specifically uh, for finance or HR, human resource management or marketing, uh, business analytics, data analytics, how big data will work. So those are the different courses which we'll be working in next few weeks, uh, which we'll be keeping you also informed. The students here and all the participants had a choice, right? You had a choice to spend this time somewhere else right now, uh, but you are here to understand how marketing works. So we would like you to utilize the whole timings of next two days to learn uh, things and how it can work out. Um, and we'll see how it works for you. Uh, please keep your cell phone on the switch off mode or on a silent mode if you're using the cell phone right now. Uh, keep it on silent mode so that it does not disturb you between the webinar. Uh, please take a pen and a paper with you to write down the notes and all. Uh, we'll be providing you the recording of this video also along with the presentation after the session is over. And that will be provided to all the participants. The participants will also be getting certificate of participation for both the days, if you are able to attend both the days, and you'll be getting a certificate of participation also uh, for this course. If you log out, you can log in again on the same software and uh, work on this uh, working. So I would request Professor Lavina uh, to take it forward on the day ahead and uh, set up the agenda and uh, discuss with the students how the market will work and uh, take the mini MB forward. And uh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, good morning, everyone. Yesterday, uh, we started a session and uh, because of lots of technical glitches, we had ups and downs and uh, we could not really finish with what we started. Uh, today, hopefully, we begin on the same platform and uh, with the same concepts of marketing and uh, try to wind up today's class with some deep insights on marketing. Uh, yesterday, we started discussing, um, which is related to the changing scenario, and that's what our uh, main discussion was all about. We were trying to understand that in reality, the business environment was so fluctuating and so changing uh, that each and every business house has to keep itself updated, generally. And you know, uh, when the business is not able to keep itself updated, with any kind of a recent trend or any kind of a recent development, uh, you cannot really guarantee the success of any organization. So that's the biggest challenge an organization has. And uh, keeping the pace with the changing market situations, uh, you also have to change your strategies uh, continuously. So uh, why is it that I'm talking about over and over again uh, with this changing scenario, with the changing technology, with the changing environment is? that marketing is not uh, based just on designing your products. It is based on how you really go ahead with the products you have produced and maybe how to go ahead with the uh, understanding of the market before you actually get into the final production. It becomes difficult for any kind of a company for that matter to survive and sustain its position in the market. If the company is not able to keep up, you know, with the pace, in fact, with the changing environment and the developments which are taking place. So it is very important for a company to sustain its position in the market. Uh, since it is a marketing class, everyone needs to understand that it's uh, not only the company's own capacity, what we are talking about, right? But it is also the company's understanding that how the different kind of market forces around are influencing them. Maybe externally or internally, as we discussed about yesterday. You know, fortunately, unfortunately, the business, you know, it gets impacted to a very great extent because of lots of market forces taking place. And the business houses, they have to take the decision based on these changes. And of course, the decisions which the you know, the organizations are taking, they have to be taken wisely. Marketing does not start only with the selling. I, I am just focusing on this point to a very great extent because by the end of the session, you will understand that why we have been talking about it's not just selling. Because it is, you cannot just say that it's selling of the product in the market. 
but you know if you talk about the beginning of any kind of a marketing activity by any organization it begins with the understanding of the market understanding the needs and the desires of the consumers in the market you know you need to understand the perceptions of your consumer i hope everybody knows about this terminology perception the way the things are being perceived by the consumer the way it is being understood by the consumers right that kind of mentality or the mindset of the consumers needs to be understood by the marketers and and then accordingly based on your company's understanding you try to build up the product that's what where the marketing begins right now here there can be two different kind of situations one is uh, maybe the business is coming up with its own idea right we we were also talking about this yesterday that maybe the business is planning to do something uh, you know conceiving its own idea having its own ideology coming up with something unique and different in the market which has not yet been taken by any other business house yet and the another one is that it is trying to understand what are the existing products of the market what are the existing demands of the consumers in the market and how these demands are being served by the different competitors in the market so see you understand there are two things basically which i am talking about one is maybe as a business house i would like to take my own decision of coming up with a product conceiving my own idea coming up with something differentiated in the market the another one is maybe i do not conceive a good idea or a unique idea but what i do is that i try to understand how the consumers in the market are being served and keeping that in mind you know the existing trend in mind i start producing that's the first step of marketing right and just try to be on the same platform as the other competitors in the market as per the existing demands of the consumers in the market uh, uh one thing uh, again i would like to pick up because we were discussing about nokia's example yesterday right uh see what is this uh, uh example or maybe a mini case talks about you know if the companies whether companies are trying to understand the global forces or not and if the company is trying to understand see understand even if the company is trying to understand how the things are taking shape how the things are fluctuating and changing you know how the different situations and the different kind of technological developments inducing the company right to implement and use different kind of changes but when you talk about this example on the contrary i would say nokia could not really survive in the market right because of its resistance to change that's what the example was all about now this resistance basically it came up because of what reason see understand the company did not have trust in its own potential and uh, where if i talk about the major competitor of nokia at that point of time that was samsung right which was the biggest competitor and uh, the company had this perception that it had more potential and strength than it has as a company do you think uh, this kind of understanding and this kind of assumption is right here just think about it my uh, students over here whoever is my audience here please whenever i am talking about any example and if i am asking you to you know just carried away with the flow with me just visualize the situation i am putting forward as uh, uh, i have already stated because if the company is not taking any kind of pains there would be no gains right so if the company cannot take the risk in the market think about this nokia company here the kind of example which we are discussing here a company who cannot increase its potential and skills as per the changing time all right we understand maybe the company does not have the potential but definitely the company has to be competent enough to increase its potential and skills in the market if it wants to survive in the market and if it really feels that it has to really beat the competition from the rigorous you know and uh, the major competitors the major players in the market it has to understand that it has to keep on developing itself 
Now, despite the fact that Nokia was the market leader for almost a decade, it was still not in a situation to take these kind of technological challenges. And it was assuming that the other companies, the other major players in the market are posing threat on it. Don't you think that this decision and this kind of understanding by the company was not desirable? And that too from a company who has ruled a mark for so many years. And definitely, you cannot just uh, uh, you know, uh, ignore this fact that it definitely had resulted into the decline of the company in the market. Uh, there is one more example uh, which I would like to connect because what we are talking about it was uh, it is going to bring in a lot of clarity again. Yahoo. It was the major online advertising marketing player. In fact, you know it had a great market share. Uh, but if you look at how Yahoo reacted in the market you would understand uh, it did not give much importance. And in fact, uh, I would say value to the search engines. And what it did was it focused basically on becoming just and just a media giant. The result is what? What happened with the company? The decisions which were taken by the company, actually they were not as per the consumer trends, not as per the market trends. In fact, I would say the company did not even pay attention or were not even concerned with the consumer's perspectives. Why am I saying it? Because the consumer perspective and the consumer understanding was at that point of time, if I talk about the desire to search, the desire to gain information and knowledge online. It was not a very great trend at that point of time, but still people were interested because it was something which was new coming up. People wanted that everything should be made available handy to them. Yes, Yahoo did have number of viewers. The content was super, whatever it had. But when you talk about the profit making capacity, it was not able to increase its profit at all because it was not trying to cater to the needs and demands which persisted at the point of time. Right, because you cannot gain profit just on the basis of your media marketing, which was not much required at that point of time. And uh, uh, let me give you uh, one thing which is connected to it. And uh, let's talk about in detail, of course. Uh, there were a lot of opportunities available for Yahoo. Lots of opportunities were av available in the market for Yahoo company. And you will be surprised to know Yahoo had a great deal to buy Google. But it refused. For what reason? Yahoo almost had a deal to buy Facebook. But just because they offered a very low deal to Facebook, so Mark Zuckerberg had to really take a step back. See, understand what is the message here. The company which could have otherwise taken over a market from its major players like Google or maybe Facebook, as I was talking about here, which offered them good opportunities. It did not fall in the company's pocket. Why? Because they were not ready to understand the relevance of change. And even if they had, right, they did not take the right decision at the right time. See what kind of a situation is here? What kind of a situation? If they had taken a right decision at the right time, my dear students, we would have been yahooing, then Googling. The company's decision. Let me again give you one more example here. I think everybody knows about BlackBerry. Such a wonderful platform. You know, the kind of uh, handset, you know, it came up with in the market. It had a name in the smartphones and tablets, right? When you talk about this category of market, it really created its good name. 
yes, they have a very good uh, success story. But what I'm trying to talk about is it's related to the changes the companies are not able to adapt, right? So I would like to connect this example, not with the success story, but with the changes which he created and the company was not able to take it up. They had actually changed the way mobile industry was operating in the market. I would say the kind of keyboard, right, they were using, they came up with, which none other company came up with. They did not use it. The kind of uh, encryption system it had, it was so unique, it was so advanced that none of the mobile company actually could think about it or came up with in the market. But since we all know that the market changes so fast, and later, after a few years, the mobile industry was more inclined towards what? Students, just think about it. They started getting inclined to wear what? Towards the big touch screen display. Everybody wanted a good big mobile phone with them. You know, it should have a good uh, screen quality. It should be big enough. It should be a touchpad, whatnot. The so latest, uh, you know, developments were taking place. Yes. But when you talk about BlackBerry here, they were more concerned about, uh, you know, protecting what they had already taken, uh, or maybe I would say they were already possessed in the market. I, I would like to, you know, uh, come on to this, like what kind of a possession they actually had. You know, I, I'll come to this point here. Uh, and because of this reason that they wanted to possess and they wanted to retain whatever they had, they were not able to adapt according to the changes. See, uh, when we talk about all these examples, right, uh, we are basically talking about what? That market is a place which offers huge opportunities, enormous opportunities in the market, which if not ever picked up by the companies around, had always resulted into the failure of the company. So what we are trying to understand basically here is, and what you know, marketers should do here is, that you just don't have to market the products which have been produced by the company. But as a marketer, it is your due responsibility to really understand what exactly needs to be served to the consumer. And this can only be found, and this can only come out when the marketers, they have a deep insight of the consumer's tastes and preferences. And of course, the technology, which plays a very important role because on which basis you will be actually molding the product. Because whatever products that need to be marketed and they need to be sold out in the market, they have to be based on the consumer demands. And they have to be based on the market forces. One of the forces which I said was, you know, yesterday we started talking about the global forces of the market. And of course, we can also add on, on the basis of this example, that there is one force, which is again our technological force. So what we were talking about, the Blackberry's example, right? We are talking about that basically what and the way Blackberry reacted in the market had actually resulted into the demise of Blackberry. It died in the market. It's, it, it was actually a kind of a condition where you can say maybe the company has to take up the decision, either you do or die. But can you really get into the in-depth of why company took that decision? One has to really understand, you know, that uh, the time at which uh, iPhones or maybe the Androids make their visibility in the market and made their entry in the market. The mobile industry had already made great moves, right? Of moving towards the touch screen displays as we were talking about. Everybody knew that this technology was evolving. 
it is a trend of the market and where the apple made a jump at the perfect timing and definitely it was followed by htc at that point of time not only htc but also samsung and they were able to exploit the market opportunities to the fullest yes htc uh, uh, let me tell you was not very influential in the market it was not able to dictate the market but yes for some time it was able to create and make its visibility uh, strong at least for some time uh now since we are talking about so many companies here you cannot forget the name of lg and sony also here right we cannot think about it that uh, you know a situation where you do not have lots of uh, competitors in the market you know at that point of time when lg and sony also made their entry right they also started functioning and started exploiting the market the way uh, the other companies in the market like htc and samsung were doing right and and related to this if you can recall students here right i, I don't know how many of you have really heard about that the time when these companies were striving hard in the market and they were competing with each other right uh, during that time period uh, dual core processors you know they became available in the market you know this kind of a technology appeared in the market and uh, uh, when we talk about this technology i would like to link it with lg here if talking about lg it made it so fast in the sense that it implemented this dual core process technology rapidly at a such a great pace in in such a speedy manner in fact that it made its place in guinness world record strange isn't it just trying to keep a pace with the market just trying to keep a pace with the technological developments that's it it is what it is just understanding the market forces you know it is having a deep insight and idea about how this market is operating and where it is going and where am i as a company supposed to go and how am i supposed to make a move we completely understand the kind of strategies which are generally adopted and uh, majorly i would say if it was adop adopted by blackberry here they were more concerned about please understand this thing now because i i really want you to link two things here one thing is that we have been criticizing blackberry that uh, it did not make a move in a particular market segment with a particular technology but you know you understand there is always something uh, you must have heard about the term usp unique selling proposition of a product a product is sold out in the market because of its unique quality unique feature and that's what the blackberry was known for now try and understand how and why blackberry reacted and acted in this manner basically what they were trying to do is they were trying to protect their existing market segment existing market segment we what are we talking about in terms of segment here yes we completely understand and that is why the company did not make any move also because it wanted to stick with a particular market segment clearly understand the picture here when you talk about students when you talk about the big organizations they had complete trust on blackberry security just think about it even the government organizations also relied majorly on the superb superb security system which was offered by blackberry the kind of reliable email system the blackberry offered amazing it was peculiar in nature and yes it basically created the trust factor amongst amongst its consumers in the market yes so what was the company known for the company was known because the consumers had a trust in the company because of the security features provided by it 
the company was effectively known for only this we cannot argue at all here class my dear students we cannot argue at all here that blackberry should forget about its goodwill which had it had you know created over a period of time should forget about its trust which it had created which it accrued from its consumers and then what are we asking the company to do is put itself into the category of smartphones and coming in the market with a large screen and becoming what becoming what the rat in the race are we assuming that for the company here we cannot argue like this right and we cannot say that if the company had reacted in that manner it would have resulted into the success of the company you never know but yes we are not exactly saying this point we are not sticking to it but sometimes understand the other part of the story also but sometimes it is very important for the company to understand how these technological developments are taking place because you never know when a company emerges when the company is evolving as a new brand and as a new product in the market maybe the company could have sustained its security feature along with those technology which the other companies and the other mobile phones were coming in the market with could be possible yes so you know uh, uh, if i talk about the overall framework here students as i said i really don't want you to have those complex definitions and the complex understanding of what we have in the book right i'm not saying that we should not study book here but we do not have that much of time to really get into those complicated definitions right the way of it has been expressed in books i just want to make it a very general and a very a uh, simple class for you to have a basic understanding of market um i would say whatever we have understood uh, the kind of a lesson which we have learned right be it a large company or a small company no matter how you are at your work how good you are at your work maybe at your product the company always has some level of potential to do well in the market to perform better in the market right you cannot say that i have reached to a position where there is no improvement where there is no development required you cannot say so right so if you are not interested and you are not willing to change or you are not willing to take a risk let me tell you class here you surrounded with so much of competition around that someone else will take up your market share and you might lose it therefore we always keep on saying either you adapt or die either you do or die i hope everybody is clear what i'm talking about here can i have uh, uh, please uh, if somebody is there uh, can you please uh, open the chat box window if it is not uh, i i really want my students to react because then i'll accordingly uh, move okay all right absolutely absolutely yes i'm getting all these yes ma'am understood everything fine fine good 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 enough good enough that's what we just want to have a basic understanding absolutely wonderful wonderful all right we can we can close um, the chat window here absolutely no problem yes we can we can close it yeah uh so uh, you know there were uh, certain things which we have tried to understand related to the global forces related to the technological forces see another thing is uh, that whenever you talk about a market see uh, we sometime back had a 
uh, had uh, this um, you know liberalization and uh, globalization or uh, i would put it into the word deregulations in fact yes under the narasimha rao government uh, you know in 1991 we came up with the concept of liberalization making our economy more liberal in nature you know when we talk about being liberal we cutting down on uh, lots of rules and regulations right so it's a kind of a deregulation right uh, and we understand that there is always a continuous push you know towards deregulation of the economic sector right and uh, just try and understand that again why am i picking up this point because it has a very strong relevance with the marketing now uh basically economic deregulation uh, uh when we say it's uh, where the government is trying to remove or maybe reduce if not completely removing uh the restrictions in a particular industry right and you understand when these restrictions are removed the basic purpose is what the basic purpose is that it is giving you a liberal and open environment where lot of competitors can come in where you have the leverage and the freedom to become a part of a particular industry because there are not lot of rules and norms to uh, you know refrain uh, you or stop you from entering to a particular industry or a market basic thing since there will be the entry of lot of competitors in the market right it is going to increase the competition in the market yes or no just just answer your uh, yourself because i'm not opening uh, that chat box here and uh, increasing the business operations also in the market because now your economy has become more liberal the government is uh, you know trying to remove the regulations uh maybe sometimes these regulations are removed when uh, you know they receive a lot of complaints you know from the business houses that uh, you know the existing rules and norms and regulations they are stopping uh, the firms ability you know to compete in the market right so this is disabling the company because when you talk about rules so as a result deregulation will somewhere enhance the competency and will make your firm more capable and of course more competitive in nature because we are talking about the increased level of competition because of the deregulation because now the firms are very clear and they are much aware that they will be fighting against the domestic and foreign players in the market and as a result they would like to make themselves more equipped so more and more challenges coming to you as and when the competition is increasing in the market right the companies would like to equip themselves the companies would like to make themselves self sufficient the companies would like to make themselves more capable and competitive because they have to face this rigorous competition in the market effectively so how is this deregulation helping it is trying to increase the firm's ability in fact right you have a positive impact here the ability to compete yeah and if i'm talking about your ability to compete here uh, i would say it's more related to your international market competing specially in the international market yes uh, uh, we cannot ignore this fact it would also help uh in the way because it would be relaxing the rules right which are generally imposed on the businesses as we were talking about so if the businesses are given relaxation come on get with the flow here with my class if there are relaxation of the rules which are generally imposed on the business this would definitely help in creating a lot of growth opportunities for the business because now people know that they yes even the risk can be taken by them because they know that the platforms are open for them 
they would like to prove themselves right and when we are talking about this deregulation it is trying to increase the competency i i would like to take up uh, uh, the whole context in relation to uh, the economic uh, indian economy in fact Let, let's try and understand i am just trying to do it uh, yes it's globalization it is called globalization this globalization has come up because there was liberalization so you can please uh, uh, stop this uh, uh, chat uh, window maybe so any time i need it i will ask you to open this because i have lots of messages messages coming okay um i was saying that uh, you know uh, let's try to understand this overall framework with the indian economy you know that perspective again needs to be understood this was under the license raj system liberalization people are talking about right that's what we started discussing and slowly and gradually because of the deregulation what we are talking about right the phase which came in india led to the end of industrial licensing in some of the sectors of course right so as a result the license raj system, right was abolished you know it it came to an end to a certain extent this actually increase the competitive environment right because a uh, lot of industries because of rules and regulations and a lot of constraints and a lot of uh, you know the pressure they could not really take a decision to be a part of that industry but now since it is liberal in nature they can take this decision because the number of firms they started getting entry in the indian market but yes this also brings a situation where the large firms please pay attention here they imposed lots of competition and in fact i would say only those companies which had the capability and the capacity and the competency or i would say all the winners of the market took all the advantages so if you are weak you cannot survive because of the rigorous competition coming up because of liberalization and globalization what we are talking about i hope that is clear to you all these can be the big firms who might eat away the market share of the small firms right the market share of the small firms will be taken over by them or this can be a well established brands which already have its image in the market right they pose and they uh, uh, you know throw a lot of competition and threat to the newcomers in the market so on one hand what we are talking about is that maybe because of this competition is increasing it is uh, you know eliminating all kind of barriers and the companies they have uh, you know freedom to enter into a particular industry but on the other hand yes if you do not have the capability and capacity you cannot survive otherwise these big companies would uh, pose so much of threat and competition on you that you might not even think of uh, sustaining yourself in the market forget about the profits at all yes um, i uh, i think uh, the chat window is uh, open here so uh, lots of yes uh so can you please uh, stop the chat window here otherwise we won't be able to cover uh, the course and the content i have with me i completely understand you might be having a lot of questions in your mind but uh, let's keep it by the end of the session uh now see uh, there are lots of developments uh, taking place and as we were talking about the globalizations technological advances and deregulations and we also said that lot of opportunities uh, are coming to the market but how it is supposed to do uh, with the marketing here that's a big question and let's try to understand this here now see uh, marketing deals basically with what now uh, coming up with the simplest way of defining it identifying uh, uh, the human needs and wants uh in fact the social needs and wants and try to meet these uh, human and social needs of the market uh i i would just say 
the shortest definition of the marketing is meeting the needs of your consumers profitably. But why is this understanding required here? As a company, what I am uh, going to do with this understanding of human and social needs, it's basically what a company is going to do is that, you know, you need to satisfy it profitably because that is the purpose of an existence of a company is, right? The economic gains, what we are talking about. So if I am understanding the market, if I'm understanding my consumers, I'm understanding the needs and demands, I have to meet these needs and demands in a profitable manner. Uh, I, I'll, I'll just take one very simple example here. A very simple example. Uh, everybody is very well aware about Kellogg's. That, uh, you know, uh, the company has observed it and they noticed it very clearly that people really feel overweight because of their lifestyle. Everybody knows the lifestyle has changed completely, right? And um, in fact, at this point of time and this situation, when everybody is working from home, I think uh, the lifestyle has altogether changed. But yes, uh, everybody wants to satisfy their taste buds. They want uh, tasty food. But simultaneously, uh, the food should be less fatty. So the company was very much aware that you know, if you really want to cater to the needs and demands of your consumer, they are feeling overweight, so they want something which is um, light on their tummy, but still tasty, right? So they came up with conflicts in the market, right? Oats is another example, right? It is trying to come, in, uh, come up with different flavors in the market and satisfying your taste buds with a different kind of flavors, be it Chinese or be just the masala one, you know, the uh, regular masala one and a lot of other tastes. You can have also the pav bhaji taste with uh, the oats around, right? See, so what the company is trying to understand is the company understands that uh, people, they're putting on weight so I can really serve the uh, product in such a manner so that it is tasty plus it is good for their health also, right? So understanding this need was very important and uh, according to their lifestyle, the company served the market with the right uh, kind of a product. Um, IKEA, it's a furniture company. I think you might be having an idea here, uh, which uh, has noticed in the market that people always wanted good furniture, right? But yes, at a relatively lower price. I think we all Indians want that. Yeah, therefore, uh, you know, the company, it created a knockdown furniture. Knockdown furniture. It is nothing, but it's a kind of ready to assemble furniture. We call it RTA, ready to assemble furniture. Also, we call it as a knockdown furniture. So it was basically turning the, the private or the social needs, you know, because, uh, you know, since everything was done through the virtual reality, it was actually trying to give you a, a, a feeling and experience where you can see your room around. And, uh, uh, you know, on the basis of that, you have a picture of the furniture. If you place it somewhere on the basis of this virtual reality and augmented reality, you can see how it would look like in the space you have. Whether the particular kind of a furniture would actually fit in the place you have, you know, the room you have. Right. So it was a very good platform. So they understood, yes, the people are doing a lot of online purchasing. And let me also come up with an idea where uh, since I will be cutting down a lot of intermediaries in the market, so definitely the pricing would be low, right? And plus it is also going to give them good experience that they can see how the furniture would be uh, looking uh, in a particular space and particular area and they can take the decisions accordingly. And uh, they can use their art also to assemble it the way they want. Again, a good idea by the company. Uh, uh, but since I'm talking about all these uh, uh, marketing rules here, I, I want to take up an example of a company who has broken all the rules of marketing. I, I really want to take up an example here. We should not break the rules of the marketing unless we are very confident, right? But still, I want to take that example. Uh, Harley Davidson. As I said, the company has broken all the rules. But still, the company is succeeding in the market. The company does not conduct any kind of expensive market research. 
which is generally conducted by all the companies around they do not invest huge amounts on advertising generally which is done by the other companies around but what the company is trying to do is it is trying to stretch its limited resources whatever i have i'm going to make the best utilization the optimal utilization of these resources in the market right they form the buyers club i think uh, uh, boys here you might be having an idea it's a wonderful club which is known as hog harley owners group right basically what is the funda here they are actually trying to live closer to their consumers in the market right and when you stay closer to your consumers you have a in depth understanding you understand your consumers in a more practical way wonderful idea by the company not even investing on the market research not putting a lot of uh, money on advertising and so on but still it has a good idea about its consumers you know so what is this they they're using a creative public relation platform here having good public relations with your consumers right and definitely that gives them a good insight and accordingly they manufacture and deliver the right kind of a quality to their consumers a unique strategy uh since we are talking about marketing here now now never forget about and keep aside all these examples marketing uh, generally talks about because i was taking up an example of advertising here so i thought uh, let me cover up here the four p's of marketing also very simple thing i will not uh, take you in detail at all but uh, yes keeping in mind the four p's of marketing that is uh, the product price place and promotion but three more p's of marketing have been added to it and making it seven p's of marketing now adding to product price place and promotion now you have three more p's to it in the in the sense you have people you have processes and you have physical evidence i will just give you the general idea about what is the relevance of understanding these seven p's of marketing what is the relevance here basically we need to understand these seven p's of marketing for a particular reason these are uh, uh, i i would say these are the seven uh, key elements of marketing and why it is necessary for us to understand because the seven p's of marketing actually makes the company understand or i would say it is where the companies uh, they try to find out the right option or i would say the right way i'm talking about the seven p's of marketing here right and i'm talking about the company's uh, decision related to the right options the right ways of helping the consumers simple i'm using very simple language here of helping the consumers identifying and selecting what the goods and services of your company what exactly am i supposed to deliver to my consumers so when i'm making a decision about the goods and services which i want to deliver i'm helping my consumers in making the selection of my company's goods and services over my competitors goods and services in the market only one line i need to understand the seven p's of marketing because i want the consumers to make my selection instead of the other competitors in the market so if my company is strong in these seven p's automatically i will be preferred over my competitors without any doubt so what kind of a platform is it giving you it is giving you a basis to identify the right kind of marketing channel 
marketing channel, the right kind of a message, right? Which the company would like to communicate to the target audience, right? That is your consumers in the market. Uh, let, let's talk about the product here, right? Starting from the product price based promotion and to the other seven Ps, right? Product uh, has to be such, which should be capable of creating uh, the kind of value system, right? To your consumers, which is expected by them. It should give you the value, right? It should give you the increase in experiences. And definitely through all these activities, the company's position in the market should be enhanced. Because maybe the kind of quality which you deliver to your consumer, or maybe the kind of a solution which you would like to give to a problem, right? As far as the long-term growth of an organization is concerned, all these factors would help you in sustaining your image in the market. So my product has to be such, which is creating a value, which is giving you a good experience in the market, right? And thereby helping me in building my position. If my product is a good quality product, if it is giving a good experience, definitely my product will be preferred over my competitor's product in the market. And that's what I want through the seven P's of marketing. Right. And it would definitely give you the word of mouth publicity. Right. So what we are trying to understand is that we are not, uh, you know, thinking only from the short term perspective, but we are trying to understand marketing from a long term perspective. If I'm able to give the quality, no problems, even if I'm not earning profits in a short run. Let it be my break even point. Let it be a little later. I really don't mind it. But if I have to sustain in the market, I have to talk about quality. I have to talk about the promises which I'm making to my consumers. Promises are very important word here. Because consumers they really look forward what you promise and what you give. Is that clear to you? And as far as the pricing of a commodity is concerned, since we are talking about a product, you need to have an idea about this pricing factor also. What is basically a pricing, you know, the amount, uh, right? The economic uh, value which the consumers have to pay, that's the pricing. Uh, pricing is generally uh, identified as uh, one of the component or the feature where we are talking about the consumer's willingness to pay also, right? It's not what you decide as a pricing. But we have to see how much the consumers will be actually willing to pay my product. You know, for the kind of product or maybe the services, it could be both. So one has to really keep in mind that the price should always match the value product provided by the product. Very, very important. They have to be, uh, they can be in fact, uh, number of factors which can be considered by the company. This can be uh, the time of payment. You know, I mean, a lot of uh, retailers in the market, they are determining the payment uh, system, their policies here, the method of accepting, uh, you know, the pricing, that is the money, right? The credit terms they give you, a lot of things, a lot of factors can be considered here. Let's not get into detail, right? The discounts and everything. Uh, so yes, these factors would definitely help the company to uh, gain profit. And in fact, I would say it's a straightforward way of guaranteeing the success of an organization because it is directly related to the economic benefit pricing. It's an economic benefit of the company. One has to really understand one thing that the company, they generally fail in the market if they cannot quote the right price of the product. If they cannot charge the right price of the product. Therefore, it is very important that the price should be such which should match the value provided by the product, neither too high nor too low. I mean, that has to be decided. And of course, how this has been priced by your competitors in the market. If you're dealing in the similar line of products with a similar quality, right? You have to see 
how it has been priced by your competitors in the market. Right? And if the company is able to understand these factors, I think definitely the level of pricing, which is charged by the uh, companies around, would be accepted by the consumer. So when there is an acceptance, there are the brighter chances of your profitability and economic gains. Coming to the another part of it. Promotion. What is promotion? One word, it's a communication. Right? It's an art of communication which you make to your consumers. Or maybe to your potential consumers. So when I'm using this word here, right, when I'm talking about the consumers, I'll be using the two categories of consumers here, already existing consumers in the market and the potential consumers. That is the consumers which have not yet taken my brands. They have not tried my brands yet, but still I would like them to be my consumers in future. Right. So I have to make a proper communication to them. So whatever you tell to your consumers, that has to be very clear. So as a company, you have to identify the right way to communicate. When I'm talking about the right way of communicating it, you have to understand who will communicate the message, what kind of channels of communication will be used. Uh, it can be through direct marketing, it can be through uh, uh, personal selling, the door to day door selling, maybe you're promoting your product. You might have seen a lot of people coming with uh, those sachets and the samples with them. Promotion, right? Um, or, uh, or maybe, yes, uh, you can also use the right kind of a promotion mix, combination of uh, everything, having a personal contact with your consumers, right? And having a, uh, you know, combination of uh, the different kind of advertisements. It can be your TV advertisements, commercials, uh, the print ads, and so on. See, we all understand promotion plays a very important role. And it determines the growth of a business to a very, very great extent, right? Uh, this is uh, basically trying to turn, in fact, or change the mentality of the consumers. It tries to increase the inclination of those consumers towards your brand. That's what the communication is. And that's what, finally, promotion is, right? You're just trying to change the mentality, the mindset, the perceptions of the consumer and bending them towards your brand, shifting them from your competitor's brand to your brand. Another thing which is important is uh, place here. A lot of things, a lot of things have been discussed. Uh, you know, the place plays a very important role because the company has to make its product available to the final consumers. And that is the place where it should be made available. Right? The company has to adopt the right channels, right? To sell its product, to finally make it available at the right place. Uh, it can be your website also. If you're talking about the online selling, it can be the direct sales as we were talking about through the retailers, through the wholesalers in the market, or maybe any kind of a distribution channel the company would like to adopt. Right. So uh, basically, you have to transport and make these goods available in the, uh, I would say, the locations which are productive to you. Right. The locations where maybe you have estimated and researched the product would be in demand. So all these factors will definitely play a very important role because making the product available at the right place and of course at the right time. Right. It completely depends on how the company operates in the value chain system. Value chain. At each and every, you know, the chain is like I manufacture it, I produce it and then finally make it available to my consumers in the market. So, you know, this is that at each and every step, you're adding a value to it and you're trying to promote the product and you're trying to make it available wherever it is required. Now, in overall uh, framework, people have a very important role to play. That's the next P of marketing. 
right? One of the major component of marketing mix. So people uh, um, are those people who are uh, maybe in your team. He could be anybody, right? From that engineer, uh, you know, who might be working with your organization. Maybe a person in the research team, right? Who has conducted a market research to find out the needs and demands, right? The production worker, aapka staff ho sakta hai, numerous other way. Anybody. So, what exactly are you trying to do here is that you're trying to build up the hierarchy of relationships. So many people working in the organization, they need to have a connection with each other. Because each and every department cannot work individually and in isolation, there has to be a lot of connectivity. They are intervened basically, right? So you try to build up that, you know, relationships with each and every person around. And you definitely try to help them, each and every employees of your organization, so that they do their work efficiently. You make them understand. And in fact, I would say, you try to work with them. Now, when you are trying to make them understand and when you are uh, working with them, let me tell you, here you are clarifying the processes. That's the next, next P of marketing. You're clarifying the processes here, right? Um, process, it's a, it's a kind of a flow. Uh, which the company is trying to use in order to um, as to who will make the product and services as to who will uh, deliver these products and services. So you, so you have to find out the exact way and the exact method of doing it. Could be logistic, you ha how you have to maintain and how you have to keep a track over it, right? Right. Uh, so research and development team might be deciding and what kind of research plan they have to make or what kind of, uh, you know, research methods uh, you, they will be adopting. I need to be clear with the flow, right? I need to be clear with the techniques and the methods to be adopted by me. It can be anything right from the marketing team, like, you know, who are trying to create a campaign maybe, you know, for your product of producing the right, point, uh, right uh, quality of products in the market. Simple. The another thing is uh, uh, physical evidence. Physical evidence, uh, simply uh, when you uh, think about this term, it has a very simple meaning, which says uh, it is tangible. I think everybody can understand this word here, tangible. What is tangible? Something which can be uh, touched by you, um, something which you can see, you can feel, right? Uh, now, there are certain companies who might be dealing only in the services. So that does not mean that there is no physical evidence by the company, right? Uh, these companies might be providing you the good uh, working atmosphere, the good ambience, which is a physical evidence. Uh, maybe um, you read a lot of things about uh, um, a particular product, you know, uh, the kind of product reviews you take, right? From lots of consumers. Again, that becomes a physical evidence, right? Or maybe the company which is coming to you to give demonstration. Again, a physical evidence. So physical evidence is not necessarily in terms of the final product, you know, which you have in your hand and which you generally buy. But it can be related to a lot of other things which is helping you which is helping you to gain information, right? About your brand, about your company, about your services. As I said, it can be the product reviews. It can be the demos, as I said, or it can be the packaging of the product, which is giving you good amount of information about the product. It can be the website of your company. So basically all these things, they are trying to give a proof for the consumers, to the consumers, that the product would be giving you some kind of benefits or certain level of benefits, right? Certain level of benefits, which have been determined, they have been defined through lots of these things, which I was talking about, the demonstration by your salespeople, you visiting the website and knowing a lot of information about the company, right? Maybe the packaging, as I said, 
So what I'm talking about that these are nothing which are very much tangible in nature. It's still this is a physical evidence, right? A restaurant is a good example here. The ambience plays a very important role when you talk about a restaurant, right? The kind of a dining experience. you would like to have you are ready to pay extra cost to it right so this is nothing but it's a kind of a physical evidence all right class so these are the four uh, p's plus the three p's of marketing making it seven and the company tries to understand them completely they try to you know understand that how they can increase the consumers uh, you know uh, level of experiences and you know the kind of expectation they have they should be fulfilled so i can do it only by understanding these seven p's of marketing and rigorously working on them all right class my students are there with me can i can i just have uh, answers uh, are you all there with me okay apart from that apart from that uh, is everything clear to um, all my students here yes everything clear to everyone to all my participants i have good number of participants here yes, yes absolutely all right okay we can we can we can stop it here we can stop it here class right there is another platform which i uh, would like to take up now and uh, this is a uh, related to uh, the different stages of marketing or maybe i would say the practices generally which are being conducted by the organizations kaise organizations uh, decisions le rahi hain if i have to act or in act in a particular way how is it going on what basis let's try and understand this uh all must have heard about entrepreneur i'm sure with this entrepreneur word right do not pronounce it as entrepreneur right as is entrepreneur and it should be pronounced as pronounced as entrepreneur right it is entrepreneurial marketing uh most of the companies they are started by the individuals so maybe you know slowly and gradually they might expand and then you have a lot of people working and then it does not remain as an entrepreneurial organization you might convert it into different forms so uh, when these organizations are started by the individuals uh, they try to visualize the opportunities in the market uh they try to gain the attention uh, and in fact i would say that they are the ones who conceive the idea they try to conceptualize this idea and uh, i would in fact say these are the companies who would like to take the first mover advantage in the market first mover advantage because i am the one who has conceived the idea because i am the one who has taken the first move in the market because i am the one who has uh, thought about something very unique and different in the market and would like to serve my consumers accordingly so i am the first mover of the market right they try to understand basically these entrepreneurs the needs and the demands of the consumers apart from that they also try to understand the hidden demands of the consumers and this kind of understanding gives them an insight about something new which can be done by the company right and uh, uh, this uh, these kind of entrepreneurs they try to give something uh, very different and unique to the market um i would also say they're not rat in the race right and uh, but they they are trying to create their own race in fact where they are very sure that they will be followed by many followers later on there will be number of competitors in the market who would be following them later on but at least once let me be the entrepreneur let me take my own decisions let me come up with the different and unique thing in the market at least for some time at least for that time period till i'm not being followed and copied by the other competitors in the market because even if you come up with a new technology even if you come up with a new product in the market maybe you are unique and differentiated for one particular span of time 
because the other companies they also have an access to the market they also have an access to the technology and they know how the other competitors are doing in the market so they will follow you so you might not remain unique for a longer duration you can be copied by anybody right so yes uh, you will be facing as an entrepreneur here lots of competition from the already existing companies in the market already existing uh, large uh, on the major players in the market right you're going to face lots and lots of challenges from them right who are well established so the basic fight for the entrepreneur is to establish themselves to create their market uh, you know position against these big giants of the market right and this can only be done by adopting the different kind of a marketing strategy how do you make uh, your product how do you promote your product how do you uh, uh, you know change the perception of the consumers in the market everything these students you must have seen lots of startups right you know these are all examples of an entrepreneurial marketing they are coming up with something new right hotel industry especially has seen this kind of phase let's not get into very much detail right uh there is another uh, you know uh, i would like to take up an example of uh, dell computers here a company uh, right uh, who has used the entrepreneurial marketing to a very great extent so uh, let, let's talk about it maybe in a very uh, precise manner why am i saying in a precise manner because marketing is um, such a huge subject it's it's so diverse you know that we cannot really complete everything so fast i need a lot of time with you but i cannot really stop myself from giving you the examples because i'm sure students have a better clarity with the examples talking about uh, um, i was giving you an example of dell computers here uh, yes one of uh, the largest and best known company computer company in the world right dell uh, has taken uh, in fact it took a lot of steps in its early stages so that it gets noticed in the computer market dell ha uh, dell has won uh, you know worked wonderfully in fact and uh, uh, this wonderful act and performance was basically uh, related to the proper understanding of the gap which existed in the market right um when i'm talking about this gap i'm basically referring to that gap which was uh, uh, you know uh, served by dell computer through its customized services you know something which is very important to note here dell first marketed its uh, you know product uh to basically to the large companies or maybe the mid sized companies it could be both and uh, these companies were the ones who were basically looking forward to purchase the computers in bulk so the basic target was and the basic consumer group for the dell company right was the large companies or maybe at the middle level so it was able to define its business consumers uh, uh, completely and very clearly that i wanted to serve this segment of the market i would like to have the customized computers made right to uh, these large companies right whatever kind of core processor whatever kind of uh, you know uh, you know lot of i think you will be able to talk about them uh, in a better manner in fact uh, you know what exactly kind of co uh, configurations and uh, you know all this i would like to have something which is customized uh later slowly and gradually they started focusing on the personal computers in the market right um when i'm talking about the personal computers i'm talking about the families here i'm talking about the students who would like to have the computers with them right slowly and gradually since the market trend changed uh, right and uh, dell also served the market accordingly so see how dell had reacted in the market is understanding initially what exactly i want to do it was trying to make itself visible in the market making its visibility through the large companies 
and then slowly and gradually once everybody started knowing about dell right it started uh, stretching its arms into all the domains in all the areas right it's not only this uh, dell uh, you know took a very strong step of selling their products directly to the consumers it's very very important and that's what it was known for instead of uh, selling it through the retailers right which was uh, uh, generally otherwise done by majority of the companies around so therefore what it was uh, doing it was cutting down on the retail middlemen and so many other intermediaries and this made it very easy for the business consumers to place large orders directly to the dell company right and the customization was also very simple such a major reform in the industry i'm calling calling it a major reform because at that point of time it was not done like that so dell took that initiative right which the other competitors in the market did not even think of or even if they had they never used it right uh when i'm talking about dell's visibility in the market let me also focus one of the point here dell uh, marketed at what i would say on numerous platforms then actually made it visibility wherever they were consumers it used to go where the consumers were there it used to follow the consumers and when i'm saying on each and every platform it was making its visibility what i mean to say is be it the electronic trades right trade shows hote hain aapke right so they marketed at the trade shows maybe it was it made its visibility even in the trade magazines right or maybe in any area where the presence of the executives of the managers could be so basically it tried to chase the consumers so you know as a company uh, you know it was trying to make its uh, presence felt anywhere the consumers go कंपनीज की फिलोसफी यहाँ पे क्या थी आई एम वेर यू आर राइट वेर एवर यू सी यू विल फाइंड मी गुड स्ट्रैटेजी बाई डेल राइट इज इट एंड सी यू ऑल मस्ट हैव ऑब्जर्व लॉट्स ऑफ एडवर्टाइजिंग विच आर फॉलोइंग यू आई जस्ट वॉन्ट आई एम जस्ट गेटिंग डिसकनेक्टेड यू आर maybe uh, when you visit a particular site and you're browsing something uh, you know maybe you get connected or you being followed by certain messages or ads i hope you see that right and uh, that is basically on the uh, uh, the search history so you doing something else you're browsing something else and uh, you see lots of uh, advertisements uh, and as i said whatever you have done in your past you know on the basis of that search history they generally try to send you the messages right and definitely it is related to your own interest area they start following you so what we all do next right we are tempted to click on the ads and finally get diverted from our main concern yes and all students amazingly these companies can drive you where they... so if these companies and these advertisements if they make their visibility anywhere right and everywhere it would be easier for you to grasp a good share of the market that was a fundamental thing coming again back to dell i i just quoted an example because i just wanted you to understand that how generally the companies they tend to follow you anywhere you go so uh, since we were talking about uh, dell um i i also want to focus that the kind of services which are offered by dell were quite exceptional in nature why quite exceptional because i'm that talking about that point of time when it was exceptional it offered 24 hours technical support nowadays maybe you get it but at that point of time dell was the company who initiated right so which was unique which was one of its own kind because there were no other competitors who were offering this kind of a services to anyone 
So this kind of a service became very valuable to the customers. Try and understand how this is different. This is different from the kind of a traditional marketing which we have. Traditional marketing is more reactive in nature. Traditional marketing is more reactive in the sense I am reacting to the external market forces. I'm doing what the market is doing. But here when I'm talking about an example of a Dell here, the market was not coming up with these kind of uh, innovations. The company took its own call, right? And it came up with this exceptional services and the other features which we have talked about. Right. So leaving that, you know, fundamental of traditional marketing, it became more reactive to the external environment. Right. And in fact, it became more innovative in nature. So traditional marketing is reactive. It is more uh, innovative when I'm talking about the entrepreneurial marketing. Here are the firms are trying uh, to take up the step. They are trying to you know, redefine the definition of your businesses around. Right. So if I have a product, I have an idea which is unique. I can automatically create the demand of that product in the market. So that's what the entrepreneurial marketing is. When uh, we talk about the business orientation of uh, entrepreneurial marketing, it has an inclination towards innovation. Right. It has an inclination towards entrepreneurship. But when we compare it with the traditional marketing, uh, I would say it has a business orientation or uh, I would say it has a customer orientation. That is understanding the customer first and then designing the strategies. No, entrepreneurial marketing says, no, let me come up with the strategies. I will automatically fix these strategies in my consumer's mind. Right. That's how I can do it. So basically the traditional marketing, it's assessing uh, the market uh, needs uh, before it is trying to develop or design a product. But when you talk about the entrepreneurial marketing, uh, it is giving you an idea first and then you can market your product accordingly. Uh, since we talked about the entrepreneurial marketing, uh, there is a very uh, important concept which is directly related, in fact, to uh, entrepreneurial marketing and we call it a formulated marketing. See, uh, small business houses or large business houses, they, you know, they try and tend to get success. They want to grow themselves. They want to expand themselves. And they certainly move towards more uh, formulated way of marketing. And, and, and let me be more specific uh, with the small companies in the market. These companies, basically, they carry on their market research, right? But they try to adopt some of the tools or techniques which have already been used in the market. Already been used by whom? By those professional companies who have their success stories, who have done wonderfully well in the market. Right? So basically, they are following those professionally run companies. So please, uh, you know, try and understand here. These companies are when I'm talking about the formulated marketers here, please pay attention. These companies are basically not the first movers in the market, right? They would like to sit and watch the other competitors in the market and accordingly act. They are the ones uh, who would like to benefit from the other's uh, success, their experiences and the would like to build up on their strategies uh, rather than coming up with their own strategies. Yes, they can also come up with their own strategies, but that's again a different platform. Their decisions are basically focused on the, uh, I would say, uh, the statistics uh, or maybe the information, the data which is provided to, by, uh, to them uh, by the marketing companies or by the research companies around. This is how a famous company has done. This is how a successful company has done. And these were the strategies which led to the development and success of these organizations. That's a good uh, learning for me as a small company. And I would tend to follow the similar strategies, formulated marketing. 
in fact um, uh, you know this kind of uh, marketing uh, you know um, is uh, the combination of uh, any kind of a uh, tactics or the channels which we use in the marketing which have been proved to be successful right and uh, when i say which have been proved to be successful that means i'm able to reach to my desired goals and targets if i follow those kind of strategies so i'm very sure as a small company who is following the formulated marketing that i adopt a particular strat strategy if i adopt i would definitely succeed in the market why am i so confident because i know the those previous companies who have used these strategies they were successful so i'm assuming the same kind of a success for me right something that has already been tested and verified so the companies they try to use this kind of a model which is not a hit and try model i hope that is clear to my students right this kind of a strategy is basically giving you a perception and an idea that if you use it it would guarantee your success because it has been proven in the recent examples uh see formulated marketing companies uh, the companies which follow the marketing formulated marketing in fact they also develop the formulated marketing uh, art and the ways over the years of learnings right over their own experiences also that is uh the learning of the market and the company place so it is basically dependent on uh, the research of the market or i would say you are also doing your self analysis so now how i have been in the past and how am i doing it at present was i successful implementing a particular kind of a strategy can i use the same strategy or do i need to modify it right so i'm doing a lot of market research i'm doing a lot of self analysis also right and keeping in mind <coughs> my own resources and potential and of course understanding of your consumers you try to find out the right formula to run the business that's it formulated marketing arriving and determining the right formula to run your business but students we started our class saying that the world is ever fluctuating the market is ever fluctuating just tell me one thing can you have the right formula to do it can you have the predetermined ways and strategies to run your company yes over a period of time i learned that the strategy really worked well but maybe over a period of time i realized because the market forces have changed themselves completely and intensely maybe i would not be able to continue with the same strategies right students i'm not saying that formulated marketing should not work or it is not good for the business but yes the company is uh, on the basis of their experiences they formulate and design the right strategy or uh, maybe as i was saying the right formula to run the business but as i said we've been talking about the market is not static in nature it is ever changing it is ever fluctuating so even please understand this thing here what exactly i want to put up here so even if you are using the same theories and the same formula right we should always leave the scope of improvement we should always leave the scope of new inclusions in the same strategy then maybe we can say or uh, we can be sure of the success of formulated marketing is that clear everyone right so see each and every business house depending on the kind of uh, you know business it operates in or maybe the environment it operates in it has a different way of performing we cannot say there is a registered and a very clear cut formula for any organization success observation is a very important tool and the companies must observe the companies around the companies must observe their competitors around the companies must observe their own performance over a period of time everything is important 
because this would help in analyzing all the data and figures and you could be able to take a better decision then comes uh, uh, there is another uh, thing which is again uh, related to it which is known as entrepreneurial marketing entrepreneur entrepreneur formulated entrepreneur generally uh, the companies uh, they they tend to get dependent on the formulated marketing thoda easy hota hai na isliye sabko dekh liya and then accordingly take your decision little easy uh yes so uh, it it's basically uh, the kind of a uh, ready made action which is available to them so as a result uh, they tend to get dependent more dependent on formulated marketing uh but you know in the whole course the company is uh, they get stuck with this way of uh, you know uh, conducting their businesses and the way of uh, designing their strategies uh the companies uh, since they are depending too much on the market reports or uh, the scanned reports in the market the data and the figures which come to them right uh, you know these are generally issued by the research agencies and so on i'm not really questioning i'm not putting up any kind of a question mark on their authenticity at all but students what i want you to think about is and understand here is that over reliability or i would say over uh, dependence on any kind of uh, market polls uh, or market agency you know who might give you these reports uh, i completely understand we need this data we need this information uh, which becomes uh, the basis of our understanding but there should not be over reliability we should not be so much dependent only and only on the information provided to us by these market agencies that's a basic thing which i was saying so uh, as a result what happens is since i become too much uh, dependent uh, on that uh, formulated marketing right and uh, as a result what generally happens is just visualize a picture here i am trying to understand the market forces i am dependent on the report which has been given to me by the agencies around So as a result, what is happening is I'm losing on my creativity. The company is basically lacking in the creativity. Then passion, in fact, which is required in guerrilla marketers. Guerrilla marketers basically are very simple to understand. These are the unconventional uh, marketers. Unconventional in the sense they want to do something which is very different, very unique. which has not been taken up by other maybe that also sound uh, they might also sound weird to you unconventional so these are the gorilla marketers so if i want to be a gorilla marketer i have to really find out those uh, you know strategies and those marketing options which has a lot of creativity with it which has a lot of passion with it and if my consumers watch me they have a keen interest in watching me right so uh at this point of time in the uh, entrepreneurial third marketing stage these kind of companies uh, they really get connected to their uh, connect, uh, you know uh, the consumers in the market that's a kind of a suggestion which is given to them these companies you know the formulated marketing pe aapki over dependence hai no please get yourself connected to your consumers start living with your consumers Harley Davidson ne yahi to kiya started living with its consumers in the market you have a in depth understanding start adding value to your consumers life not on the basis of what these research agencies are giving you but what is your own experience with your consumer that is more important show it's a kind of a show only the company should always try to find out the new ways of performing its business they have to understand everything at each and every kind of a level so if you want to understand your consumer you have to come down to that level and understand everything from their perspective try to find out the new ways to add values right which are expected by them right but we should understand one thing very well 
that any kind of a marketing we follow, right? Any effective marketing, right? It has different kind of a form. So I cannot say formulated marketing is effective or entrepreneurial marketing is effective or entrepreneurial marketing is effective. Depending on what kind of a situation am I in? Depending on the kind of a business you are in, your products uh, staging in the product life cycle, which is also relevant. Where product kaha par hai? Whether it is a new product which is introduced in the market or it is a developing product or maybe it has already saturated in the market. What kind of uh, product am I talking about? Or maybe it is a declining product in the market. Accordingly, the companies will decide which kind of orientation the business would like to have, right? Either it has to be a typical market orientation in terms of your consumers, or it can be internal orientation of your organization, or it can be innovation orientation, which the organization picks up. My dear class, are you all with me here? Are you all here with me? Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, thank you. I hope everything is clear. There is a clarity of concept because that was the basic funda, you know, of taking these uh, classes and sessions with you. Marketing is very wide, as I said, right? Uh, but uh, as I said, we cannot really cover up so many things in a very short span of time. But still, I am just trying uh, to give you a brief overview, right, about uh, how these marketers are acting, on what basis uh, they are taking uh, the decisions, on what basis they are designing their strategies, right, which is very important. Um, Yes, I know the time uh, is over. It's already uh, 1.10 and uh, I think we should be leaving the class now. All right, tomorrow hopefully I'll see you at the same time. All right, I think uh, the time given to you all is 11.30. Right, you should all log in well in time. We'll have the next session on uh, marketing tomorrow. So here we wind up, um, um, Rajit sir or maybe Kishore sir, shall we wind up the session? All right, okay. Okay, fine. See you tomorrow, sharp at 11.30.